So, a few weeks ago, I uploaded the unboxing and the first impressions of the Pantech Mascore MK852 Full Mechanical Keyboard. So if you haven't watched it yet, click the card up here or the link down in the description box below before you watch this video. And if you've already watched it, stick around until the end to know the pros and the cons of this keyboard and I will also be answering your questions about this keyboard. Hi, my name is Jarvis and welcome to the channel where we bring you the best bang for buck gear, the best tips and tricks when it comes to smartphone videography, and the easiest editing tutorials for teens who want to start creating content. So if you want to see more videos like these, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet with those post notifications on so that you'll always be updated whenever I post a brand new video. Now with that said, let's jump right into the full review of the Fantech Max Core MK852 Mechanical Keyboard. The Fantech Max Core MK852 is a bang for buck budget mechanical keyboard. It is priced at just around 1,400 to 1,800 pesos on Lazada. Now here are my final thoughts on whether you should buy this keyboard and who it's for. The Max Core MK852 is a full mechanical keyboard. It has all the different function keys alongside with a full-size numpad. Although the keyboards that come out today are mostly TKL and 60% keyboards, I still prefer a full-size keyboard considering that I do a lot of typing that usually includes a lot of numbers. This keyboard has the Otemu Brown switches, although you can choose between the Otemu Browns and the Otemu Blues. Typing on it feels great and overall I don't have any complaints here. The Max Square MK852 also features a media roller in which you could adjust your media volume within arm's reach. This feature did poke my interest and became one of the main reasons why I bought this keyboard. You also get 20 different RGB spectrum modes in this keyboard. I already featured these lighting modes on the unboxing and first impressions video so you could go and press the card up here to watch it. As usual, we have a standard nylon USB-A cable which is sadly non-removable. Of course, on the back, we do get the two legs that can raise your keyboard up a bit. I have been using this keyboard for around a month now and so far, it's still standing strong. The performance and feel of the keyboard is still the same as the first time we unboxed this. The keycaps are still fine. There are no signs of fading and paint chipping which is great being the stock keycaps. I do plan to replace these keycaps but we will do a separate video for that. Typing on this keyboard is great as expected. The Temu Brown switches are performing very well and I have not experienced any problems yet. In terms of gaming, it still performs pretty well given that these are brown switches. As advertised, all keys were anti-ghosting and this was true. As I said, I haven't experienced any problems yet with this keyboard. The media roller was a life changer. When I edit my videos, I don't need to reach out to my headset to adjust the volume because I can just use the dedicated media roller to control the volume. This simple thing makes my work more efficient and smooth. Now before we head on to the pros and the cons of this keyboard, here is a short type test on what the Otemu Brown Switch sounds like along with the keyboard standard keycaps. Now let's talk about the pros of this keyboard. First, it has a great build quality. 
The build quality of this keyboard is absolutely great. You can't really tell that this is a budget keyboard in terms of its build quality. The two adjustable legs on the back of the keyboard are built really well. There are no signs of any damage on the legs and it doesn't seem that it will break over time. The keyboard does have some heft to it and its weight is around 1kg and it doesn't feel cheap. It does flex a little but it's not a major concern. Second, the media roller. The media roller can be used in two different ways. When the wheel is lit with the RGB, it means that it's controlling the brightness of the RGB lights of the keyboard. To change its function, simply press and hold the wheel for around 3 seconds. After holding, the wheel's light will be turned off. This means that it is now controlling your media volume. This feature can really be useful especially in watching or editing videos since you can change the volume within arm's reach. Third, the design. The design of this keyboard is really sleek and simple. The keys are laid out nicely and I don't have any complaints with that. The keyboard uses the standard keyboard layout so if you're planning to replace its keycaps, replacement keycaps shouldn't be hard to find online. The finish of the keyboard is matte black. I like that it's matte rather than glossy because it won't be a fingerprint magnet and it's much easier to clean. Fourth, the keyboard driver. The driver of this keyboard is very user friendly. All the different settings and personalization adjustments can easily be seen. Setting up different key functions was also a breeze. You simply press on the key and select the function that you want to assign to it. You could also change the different spectrum modes from here, but you could also do it manually by simply pressing down on the media roller or holding the function and INS keys on the keyboard. Fifth, its keys are ergonomically arranged. Looking at the keyboard sideways, you can notice that the height of the keycaps are not the same. Some keys are higher and some are lower, giving you this curved look and feel. This keyboard still does use the standard keycaps and layout, but the way that the keys are laid here is to reduce hand strain when typing or gaming for a long period of time. I do like this feature and it does reduce my hand strain since I edit and also do schoolwork for a long period of time unlike my previous keyboard. Six, this keyboard is water and dustproof. Now when I say waterproof, I'm not telling you to pour a glass of water to test it. This being waterproof only means that it can resist splashes of water and not a whole glass poured into it. The keyboard is also dustproof. It still does collect dust under your keycaps and make it dirty but it won't be able to damage certain parts of the keyboard because it's built to withstand dust. Last but not the least is obviously its price. In the previous episode of Hashtag Gear for Less Sundays, I said that the price of the Fantech Max or MK852 mechanical keyboard was around 1,800 pesos on the official store of Fantech Philippines on Lazada. But you could also check out other stores on Lazada where you could get this for much cheaper. I did found a store in Lazada selling this keyboard for just 1,440 pesos. You can check out their store through the links down below. Anyways, for the price, I love the feel, the durability, the design, and the different features of this keyboard. With that said, so far it's a win for me. However, not all things are perfect. Even with the pro said, this keyboard does still have its flaws. This may break your interest if you're looking for a keyboard that has certain features, but it's still up to you if you're willing to sacrifice these certain features in order for you to use this band for buck keyboard. 
First, as for a budget keyboard, this one doesn't come with a removable cable. It comes with a standard non-removable nylon cable, which means that you can't really buy custom cables that may usually improve the look in your setup. I do dislike the fact that it still has a nylon cable instead of a braided one. This was a disappointment to me since braided cables are a lot more durable and managing a braided cable would be much more easier. Second, you can't change the RGB lights into a single color. This may be a deal breaker if you're going for a color coordinated setup. I personally did not expect this since it's a new product, there aren't many reviews on the internet. You only get the 20 RGB spectrum modes that some may not prefer. Third, it's non-hot swappable. I kinda did see this coming and for me, it's not a big of a deal as of the moment. Having a hot swappable keyboard means that you can change the switches of the keyboard. You can change the switches of a certain set of keys to give it a different feeling. But it also means that if you have a faulty switch over time, you could easily buy replacement ones. I can't really confirm this yet. It's not stated in the keyboard specifications if it's hot swappable or not. But I'll make sure to update you when we get the response from Phantom. Fourth, some of the function icons are not lit by the RGB. This may be a tiny detail but it does kinda disappoint. The main reason why we buy keyboards with RGB backlights is that so we can easily see the keys and functions. However, in this keyboard, the stock keycaps doesn't light up the different functions. These are only printed in white and when you're in the dark, it can get hard looking for these function keys. And finally, being a full-size keyboard, it does take a lot of space. Having a small setup like mine means that my desk space is very limited. But I don't have any complaints with it since having the different features is a good enough reason for me to buy it. Overall, I think that if you're willing to sacrifice the certain features that are not included in this keyboard, I still think that this would be a great buy. Personally, I do think that the pros outweigh the cons a lot. Even though that these features would have been great, I'm still fine with the features that you get from this keyboard and for its price, there couldn't be anything better. For my type of work, I think that the build and feel of this keyboard is unrivaled. Typing on the Otemu brown switches are a delight alongside with the ergonomic layout of the keys which reduces hand strength. The stabilizers in the spacebar key and other keys work decently well. It does wobble a little bit but it doesn't really concern me. Even though that this is only a budget keyboard, to me it doesn't really feel as cheap. It sure would be a delight to use a much more expensive keyboard but I can't really find a good reason to waste that much money into a keyboard. Before I head on to the next points, drop a like if you're getting value from this video and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos. Tell me in the comment section below the products that you want me to compare or review for future videos. You'd also want to stick around until the end to know my final thoughts about this keyboard. Now, who is this keyboard for? I think that this keyboard would be best used by people who do a lot of typing. With the Otaimu brown switch variant, typing on it is a breeze as I said earlier. I don't really make that much mistakes when I'm using this keyboard which is great whenever I'm typing articles and stuff. This keyboard is also for those who do slight gaming. Although this is a full-size keyboard, I think that gaming using this keyboard is still pretty decent. Having the tactile brown switches are surprisingly great whenever I play different games such as Call of Duty. The response of the keys are great and I don't have any complaints here. If you're a student and you're looking for an upgrade, I would recommend this keyboard. As I said earlier, typing on this is absolutely great. So doing schoolwork, especially this year, would be a lot more easier. And after doing your different schoolworks, you can now use this for gaming. Finally, I would recommend all the video creators and editors to check out this budget keyboard. 
It offers numerous features as I showed you earlier and I think it's worth to check out. Being a full-size keyboard means that we do get the different function keys and the numpad. Although it does take a lot of space, I think it's worth it. If you have a small desk like mine, I think that you should definitely consider this. However, in my case, I don't really care if it takes that much desk space since I'm upgrading my desk suit. The most commonly commented question in the previous episode was if you could change the RGB into a single or monochrome effect. I did try to do this on the driver but sadly you can't. As I said earlier, I also didn't expect that it can't be changed into a single color since some people prefer to have a color coordinated setup. I reached out to Fantec Philippines hoping that they could find a way to update the driver adding a monochrome effect and we expect a response from them soon. But for now, we don't have a monochrome effect, but we're hoping to get that feature soon. Another question that was asked was if this keyboard has a static mode for the RGB. If you've watched the unboxing video, I featured all 20 spectrum modes and it does include a static one. Watch that video to see all the different spectrum modes of the RGB in this keyboard. Finally, the last question that was asked is how to change the RGB spectrum modes of this keyboard. Simply need to press down the media roller once when the wheel is lit by the RGB. Or hold the function and INS keys of the keyboard in order to change the RGB spectrum modes of this keyboard. You can also do this in the driver by simply clicking on this drop down arrow then hit apply. In conclusion, I really can recommend the Fantec Maxro MK852 mechanical keyboard considering its price and features. I can now officially call this the best bang for buck budget mechanical keyboard of the year 2020. If you're going to use this keyboard for whatever reason, I can't really see any major concerns regarding the keyboard's performance. The links to the stores where you could pick this up are on the links down below. I hope that you found this video useful and if you did, drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't yet. Check out my previous videos by clicking on the screen or through the links down below. Well, thanks for watching the second episode of Hashtag Gearful Sundays. Again, this is Jarvis. Stay safe and peace.